In this video, we will be demonstrating how to properly use and lift weights to the effect of muscular development and exercise. When lifting weights, it is always smart to be careful and have a buddy, or a spotter, around to help. The warm-up, or the period of slowly introducing stress and movement to the body before a workout, is an essential part of any training regimen. Always warming up before a workout will increase your range of motion and allow your body and muscles a chance to grow accustomed to stress, especially if you have been sitting and studying all day. When adding weights to a barbell, always be sure to place the largest and heaviest weights closer to the center. This helps to maintain balance and keep the center of gravity close to the middle where you are. The purpose of the weight clips are to keep the weights on the barbell held in place. This will help to avoid the weights from moving on and unbalancing the bar and, of course, to keep the weights from falling off. To grip the bar during a push press lift, separate your hands about a thumb's length away from the knurling. Do this to help properly maintain positioning. The waiting stance for the push press is the same as the back squat, leg shoulder width apart, back straight. The bar should be held up at about neck level, resting on the clavicles. To execute the lift, take a small squat using only your knees, exhale and explode upward, forcing the bar above your head at the same time. Hold the bar in the air for just a second, then, at a moderate pace, lower the bar back into the resting position. During this exercise, your back should be straight and your feet should never leave the ground. This press trains the deltoids and the triceps. The front squat and the back squat are similar exercises, but they are not exactly the same. When grabbing the barbell in a front squat, spread your hands about a thumb's length away from the end of the knurling and, using this as a reference, grab the bar with your index and middle fingers only. Push them under the bar so that they are bent backwards, then move your body <clears throat> under the bar so that your anterior deltoids are resting against the bar. Using this position, grab the bar off of the rack and get into the same preparation stance as the back squat. Make sure that your elbows are eye level and your fingers are grabbing the bar but not tightly gripping it. The purpose of the arms are to balance the weights to be able to do the lift and are not meant to be holding weight. If your fingers or wrists begin hurting, make sure that you have a relaxed grip on the bar and it is always a good idea to do wrist stretches before beginning the front squat. The difference between the actual squatting motion of the front and back squats is the placement of the weights on the body. Due to its position, the front squat trains all three heads of the quadriceps, but not so much the hamstrings or the glutes. Your center of gravity should still be placed on your spine and heels. The process to do the normal deadlift is to lift the bar to waist level and drop the weights. To pick the bar up, spread your hands a thumb's length away from the end of the knurling, tightly grip the barbell, and crouch next to it. Your back should be straight and set rigidly, and your arms should be mostly stretched out and tightly gripping the bar. Rest all of your mass on your heels while still maintaining balance. You should be close enough to the bar to easily grab it, but your center of gravity should be placed just behind it. When executing the lift, ensure that your weight and your lifting weight is centered on your spine and heels and your back is rigid. Lift with your legs and pull the weight up with your arms. If you are not doing the Romanian deadlift, you may simply drop your weight and repeat. To do the Romanian deadlift, maintain a standing position with elongated arms and a rigid back after you pick the weight up. Slightly bend your knees and use your waist to bend over until the weight reaches your kneecaps, all the while maintaining a straight back and not moving any part of your body except for your waist. Once you reach this point, revert to your original position without breaking form and repeat. If done properly, this lift will primarily train the hamstrings, glute, quadricep, and lower back muscles. The proper grip for the bench press is the same as the push press. Using this grip, extend your arms until they form a 90 degree angle. When lowering the weight, ensure that your arms are perpendicular to your body to properly engage your arm muscles. A fully lowered bench press repetition is when your elbows create a 90 degree angle or when the bar is about an inch off of your chest. If your elbows are farther forward than your shoulders, it will create unnecessary stress on your shoulders. This can also happen when you lower the bar too close to your chest. These, this unnecessary stress on your shoulders can cause tendonitis and will not properly train your triceps brachii and pectoralis major, the primary muscle groups for this lift. The back squat is a useful lift to strengthen the legs and lower back. 
When gripping the barbell, be sure to place your hands about an inch away from the end of the knurling. This will help maintain proper form and set your back. To do the back squat, place the bar on the back of your neck, just above the spine, and on top of your deltoids. When squatting, separate your legs to about shoulder width and look up with your back straight up and set rigid. This is the proper form and will help to prevent injury and increase balance. To properly squat, ensure that the distance you squat is below 90 degrees. This engages the quadricep, hamstring, and gluteus muscles and allows for them to be trained. If this is not done, those muscles will be neglected and they will eventually become weaker than your lower leg muscles. As you lower in your squat, be sure to inhale, and when ascending from your squat, exhale and rise at the same time to increase explosive force. Be sure that your back is straight and you are resting on your heels in order to properly engage your leg muscles and maintain your center of gravity. Conclusion. In this video, we reviewed how to properly execute each of the five primary lifts, and we reviewed some aspects of a proper exercise routine. It is always a smart idea to be safe when lifting weights and maintaining a proper form will properly train your muscles and help to avoid injury. A spotter is always a good person to have around because they can help you if you cannot lift the weights that you chose and they can also help in an advisory capacity, keeping an eye on and correcting.